in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light shine through? Detection Radio. I'm Kay. And I'm Chad. We pray you all had a blessed week. It's our pleasure to welcome Denise Tersmet of Little Light Studios to Deception Detection Radio. Welcome, Denise. Thank How you. How are you? Glad to be here. Yeah, it's, I'm doing well. Thank you. Great. Well, it's wonderful to have you here. We're excited to hear about Little Light Studios and the ministry and have you fill us all in. If we could go ahead, please, and do the opening prayer. And could you please do the honor of that? Sure, I'll do that. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share um, your awesome word and this awesome message, um, uh, of which I'm extremely passionate. Please, Lord, hide us behind your cross and let us all be to the glory of your name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank yeah. you. A little like studios what it is about you guys have watched a few of our documentaries right that's how you guys got in contact with us and asked us to do this uh this um episode yes, yes. I've, I've watched about three of them already which one yes. have you watched i mean and i know it's replacement gods and controller right yeah i've got controller one and two on dvd that's and i've good. also got replacement gods uh, i need to check out magic kingdom that's yeah, Magic Kingdom is pretty good. So Magic Kingdom is actually the first one we ever produced. Uh, our ministry is a media ministry, Christian media ministry, and we make documentaries about um, all kinds of subjects. We started off with um, a Battle Food Hollywood series. Um, and in our ministry, um, it started with two guys, two brothers, who actually worked in the Hollywood business, um, raised Christian, um, got, you know, moved to Tinseltown, worked in Hollywood, and did everything that the Bible does says we shouldn't be doing. I mean, I, I know Scotty Meyer, um, um, one of my best friends and a colleague, a colleague of mine, he um, actually got pretty addicted to drugs and uh, lived the party life, totally, totally lost sight of God. And um, we have his testimony and uh, on, on our YouTube channel. If anyone wants to check it out, it's pretty um, pretty amazing. Lord led him back, and the Lord led his brother back, who also was in Hollywood to live, work with pretty big celebrities. And um, you know, if I mentioned their names, everybody knows them. But I don't want to make a big thing out of this because obviously those people are just people that God also loves. And uh, so they got out of Hollywood and um, started his ministry with their childhood friend. And started teaching people what's actually in the movies, what's actually, what is all the stuff doing to your brain? We have a whole documentary about that. And um, I joined a year ago when I first um, went to California for the first time. I'm from native from the Netherlands, but I live in Tennessee now. Um, went to California um, to get some training from them. And they learned about my child um, gaming addiction when I was um, a teenager. I was have been playing games all my life, had all kinds of uh, consoles and PCs and everything. Um, came in Christian, I was 16, stopped playing games. And so I, um, I joined them in California last year, asked me if I wanted to uh, make, make a documentary for them, Control Level 3, about video games. We have Control Level 1 and Control Level 2 about video games. So this is a sequel. Controller meaning who's in control of your life. Is that the Lord or is that Satan? And then Level 1, 2, and 3 being the sequels. And that's our new documentary that we're going to um, uh, release November 7th. So we're extremely excited about this. We took a whole year to make this, and it's going to be awesome. I'm highly excited. Just to let you know. It sounds yeah. good. I would like to purchase an advanced copy, please. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> get it mailed to you before everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 We're super stoked. This is going to be awesome. We got some pretty good response from people and, um, this one is going to be pretty different than the former ones. Um, in, in control level one, uh, the theme is simulated spirituality and control level two, the theme is hidden characters in which we talk about mainly Gnosticism and, um, how the, there are very many biblical, um, themes in games that are put on its head and give you a completely different view of who Christ is. Uh, very subliminal that you don't really notice it. Um, and in Control Level 3, we decided to do to, to um, stir in a completely different direction, and we decided to talk about the games that are played most in these days. And in many of those games, all these games I've played in my life, um, that is Halo, that is Grand Theft Auto, that is Call of Duty, and that is, uh, let me think, the last one, Assassin's Creed. So we talk about those four games, and we talk about brain the, the games on the brain and we talk about uh we have testimonies from two guys from australia who are pretty addicted raised in a christian home and this took them pretty, completely away from the lord and they uh, have come back and and now are now sharing their stories about you know you've got to be careful with this stuff even with the simple things like empire games it's just totally totally got them hooked and um that's that's what we're trying to yeah trying to do so yeah i, got I think it. that it go ahead okay I think that is so important because I have seen that manifest in uh, one of my sons. Yeah. And I've seen some of the games. I mean, he's an adult now. Yeah. But I see some of the games that they play, the assassin, all of them that you mentioned. Yeah. And you can see the replacement, what's taking place. You can put it with the Bible, and it's like, this is so wrong. Yeah. And you know that their brains are firing yeah, yeah. All these different chemicals and hormones. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's what we we talk about that quite a bit um, in um, in Controller Three. Um, we just share like you know what it's doing to your brain. And I don't know if you ever heard of the frontal lobe and and the prefrontal cortex. It's a complicated mm -hmm. story. Um, but um, the frontal lobe, yeah, in the nutshell is is the, it's the most frontal part of the brain and um it's it's we use it for different things um but what, what the, the most important thing is that we use it to make decisions and we use it to to for worship for spirituality for morality for the will uh for it, it's what you use to to say hey am i going to pick up my bible today because I am choosing to follow the Lord. And um, I'm going to look up a verse here. It's in Isaiah 118, Isaiah 118. And uh, let me see if I can pick it up here. If I can quickly go pick up my Bible. If I have it, let's see. Um, Isaiah 118 says, Come, let us reason together now, saith the Lord. And, and God's talking about reasoning. He says, I want you to be a thinking creature. I don't want you to be a robot and just follow me. And with our frontal lobe, we say that we reason, we make decisions, we worship. The problem is that when we play video games, and it's the same with movies, with entertainment style TV programs. When we watch entertainment TV or, or movies, the frontal lobe is suppressed. Um, it's the the um, shots, the clips change so frequently in one tiny little scene um, that the frontal lobe cannot handle it. It's too much. It's, it's, it gets like an overload. And, and then what it does is it gets suppressed and the limbic system, which is behind the frontal lobe, takes over. And the limbic system is the exact opposite of the frontal lobe. The limbic system is for uh, fight or flight. It's for anxiety, irritability, impulsive behavior, negativity, aggression, and, and lust for sex and for food. And obviously there's nothing wrong with the limbic system because God made us with it. I mean, if I would have a limbic system, I would not say, oops, I got to run away. There's a lion in front of me. It's going to eat me. <laughs> um, and, and, but we want this thing under control and when we have this in all this entertainment, it's not under control. It's actually taking control of the frontal lobe, which says, hey, you got to, you know, stop right here and stop right now. This is this is the line and you cannot cross it. 
that's kind of the problem. And something else is happening is that when you have that process going on with the limbic system taking over, um, your brainwave changes changes from beta, which is uh, you know critically analyzed. So right now, as you guys are listening to me, you're in beta because you're analyzing, you're critical, you're trying to listen to what I'm saying. It changes to alpha, and alpha is something that is um, kind of like a, uh, a state of trance or is a highly suggestible state. Um, and when people try to get you into an hypnosis, they're trying to get you in that specific state. So when you're watching all this entertainment, playing games, you're in this highly suggestible hypnosis state. That's kind of what's happening, and that's pretty scary. Wow. Yes, that is very scary. It's like a drug. It is. It is kind of like a drug. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's an attack on the brain, and Satan knows this, and he's like, I'm going to use this right here and um, make sure that people are not ready for when Jesus comes, and put all these these messages in these uh, games and in these movies, just like in, as we talk about the replacement gods, so that people will um, have a completely different view of the Lord and, and not the view that he wants us to have by studying his word. Chad, you had a question? Oh, no, I, I didn't have a question. I was just going to admit that I am also a... I'm a game collector. I love playing video games. In fact, I've probably got close to about 10,000 or more video games. I own every oh, wow. system, own every system there is and have every game that's worth owning on those systems and uh yeah, so I'm a hardcore gamer myself. Yeah. Well, you're not the only one. I used to be a pretty hardcore gamer. I um I, I cannot remember one moment of my life without games, honestly. Um I I think I started it also well it started with with I was I was I'm 22 so I was born in 1994 started with our first computer that we had and you know like innocent games like Lego Racers and Tarzan and stuff like that um, though of course that, that also affects your brain quite a bit um, and then I got into all kinds of other things we got a, King, a Nintendo Gamer Color. Um, we had an Xbox One, the first Xbox. We had a PlayStation One. We got Nintendo Wii, and I was—I think we were mostly Nintendo uh, kind of guys. And me and my brother, and yeah, and you know, it's Satan knows your weaknesses, and he know, he knew my weaknesses. And I was—I only recently did I realize that I was actually pretty addicted. I was listening to. A guy on the, a website called Audio, Audioverse, they have some pretty good sermons on there. A guy called Scott Ritzman, he was talking about, he has a series, an excellent series, Media on the Brain, talks about all kinds of media, such as social media, music, movies, all those things. And um, he did a talk and he quoted some sci- uh, uh, scientists who said, oh, if you have, I don't know, like four out of ten of these points, of these things, you were you're an addict, and I had like seven. Used to have seven. I was like, what? <laughs> so it was quite shocking for me to learn that I was actually an addict <laughs> as a girl. <laughs> oh, there, there's lots of hardcore game uh, or gamers out there that are uh, female, and yeah. in fact, there, a lot of them out there are actually better than the guys. So there's. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I remember playing Call of Duty one or two or some one or two one of those online, and my nickname was Pinky Porkies, and everybody would know I was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Beating them. <laughs> I like video games to a, a degree. It's not something that fills my life. Yeah. Um, it's an occasional thing, but I started out with Mario. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, and I'd seen where you really point out the correlation with Mario's search to rescue the queen. Yeah, yeah, that was so well done. Yeah, very interesting. But yeah. I like the role playing games, you know, the Final Fantasy and and all those. And and I've got to admit, Chad's got me into. Uh, Chrono Chrono Cross. No, it's Chrono Trigger. Chrono Cross. Is Chrono the Trigger. Yeah. Right. And uh, but it's just an occasional. Now, years ago, it would be an all the time thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, 
like just as you said about Mario, um, I think it's interesting for the listeners to learn about that because Mario seems so innocent, um, but um, no, Mario is actually pretty gnostic, as we pl- as you explain. I think it was Control Level Two with hidden characters, if I'm not wrong. Um, Gnosticism is something that comes from the second century. Um, and it's actually had its roots in the Christian church. Uh, there was a bunch of Christians that said, well, we don't really want to believe the uh, beliefs of the Bible anymore. We're going to head out and we're going to flip the Bible upside down. Everything that the Bible says, you're going to flip it on its head, put it on its head. And um, so they come out with the idea that, uh, you know, what, say, what Satan did in the Garden of Eden was actually good. Satan is actually our hero, and sin sets us free, and Jesus is just a bad guy. That's that's kind of what they were saying. Um, and I think it's pretty interesting that if you Google Gnosticism in movies today, and, and um, I mean, there's movies like Pleasantville. I love that movie, but it's extremely Gnostic, even when you think about it. Pleasantville and The Matrix, Batman, Superman, uh, all these movies that are so Gnostic that have a message in there that's like, oh, you know what? God's actually not that good. He's actually pretty evil. And uh, yeah, Jesus, uh, uh, he's evil. And Satan's actually good. He, you should worship him. The law? No, no, no. Don't go with the law. Go, don't go with the Ten Commandments. That's actually all pretty bad. Um, and you, the same thing we see in, in video games, such even Mario, um, that when you look up the history of Mario, he was actually a carpenter. Uh, Mario, of course, he saves a bride. He fights a dragon. And there's many more I can go into that really shows these Gnostic aspects. One of the things that I like that you guys really got into is that y'all went into the history of where Nintendo started, where they came from, and what yes. what their first products that they put out were and where it tied into. You want to get into a little bit of that? Yeah, so so when you look at the history of Nintendo, they didn't start making games. They made all kinds of products. I think even the Love Machine and everything. Um, but they also have started with a set of car, a deck of cards. And when you look at the cards, you can just find people on YouTube um, that use these Nintendo cards, the original cards, for fortune telling. And that is because. These Nintendo cards originate from, I think it was from the tarot cards, and the tarot cards originate from, um, it was some missionary, um, he was a Jesuit, and he came to, from, if, if I'm right, I'm trying to summarize now what we had in a documentary, because I haven't watched it in a while, um, but he came from, I think, Spain, if I'm right, um, to Japan, and so he introduced the, card, the playing cards there, and um, yeah, it has a pretty weird weird past weird history that i was like pretty shocked to learn about so i think it's i think for everything that we look at you know everything we watch and play like look at the history just do a little bit of research and and when you do that man you discover so many crazy things and yeah and same way with control level three when i when i looked i I researched for about all these games, I was shocked. And the, the crazy thing is, it's, it, in the beginning, it was really hard to wrap my head around this. It was so hard to, to pierce through this, these all these layers and layers. Like I was, I remember just doing this research and I was about Halo and hey, the story of Halo is so complicated. If you're not playing the game, then it's so difficult to go through it. And and finally it hit me and finally I understood. And I was like, this is crazy. This is insane. What is happening here? I write a blog on our website as well, littlestudios.tv. So yeah, we can definitely use some of that for for a blog and share some thoughts about that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I sent you uh, three videos in the Skype room here that uh, you can... Okay save those later and check them out because like i said that chrono trigger for sure i was like when i watched that i was like oh my goodness it's like this is my all-time favorite game in the whole wide world yeah. i was like oh man yeah yeah that was the same with me i mean i <laughs> I'm, I'm a completely different person now um when i was what was it 12 or something i was a complete tomboy when i was a kid i was like anti-pink anti-skirts that's it <laughs> i i mean i was yeah, heavily into gaming. 
um, it was my brother who also introduced me, not to blame him at all, but he introduced me to quite a few games. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'll play this. I'll play that. And, you know, the interesting thing is that um, as a kid, we had, I think, six weeks off or something for a summer holiday. And six weeks we would play games nonstop. Uh, gaming, gaming, watching TV, and and eating snacks the whole time, <laughs> and and um, and I remember so well my brother and I telling each other, you know, we're so bored. Can we please go back to school? And now that I've come to the Lord and I have, you know, I I'm I'm wanting to work for the Lord. I spend so much time just like working for Little Light and, and writing. If I if if I'm not work at work, I'm at home writing blogs. I just want to get the truth out, and there's not a second that I can say I'm bored. And um, even if I would have nothing to do, I could read a book, uh, a Christian book or something, study the Bible, and that is just so exciting. I mean, I live such an exciting life, and the Lord has truly blessed. And I, there's just no way I would just not want to go back to those boring summers when I would play so many hours and I would just feel empty, really. That's what I would feel. It just wouldn't satisfy me. But the work of the Lord and his word, that's what truly satisfies. Amen. It's amazing uh, some of the, the correlations of the boredom, depression that are connected to the video game world. Yes, definitely. Um, we have a documentary called Pseudology, the Art of Lying, in which we talk about mainly about how uh, um, advertisements and about how kids TV affects kids brains and, affect, and advertisements affect the adult, adults brain and just movies and TV in general. And we, ta- we, we interview many scientists and among other uh, among other things, we interview New Natalie, he is a medical doctor. He has his own practice, I think. And I think he's also the head of uh, uh, a Christian school in which they teach a lot of medical stuff and how to reach people uh, uh, with your medical profession because Jesus was the great physician, basically. Um, So we interviewed him, and he talks about the frontal lobe quite a bit. He's done quite a bit of research. And he explains how research shows that we have so much of this media right now, so much of these things everywhere, with TVs, we have iPads, we have computers, and there's nothing wrong with, with you know, you can really do good things on a TV. You can watch awesome nature programs, and I'm blessed. Check it out. Come close to the Lord. There's informative documentaries. There's, there's news that's, you know, keeping up to date. Uh, with an iPad, you can do good things. But he says there's so many of these things now, yet, depression is skyrocketing and he explains that when he's trying to treat someone for depression what he's trying to do is increase the oxygen level in the frontal lobe but when you have all this entertainment it decreases the oxygen level so it's not helping out in in, any any way and when we are depressed what do we do pick up the remote pick up the controller and watch the tv program or play a game because that's the fastest way of trying to feel that comfort again and that pleasure it might be comfort or pleasure for a moment, but yeah, your oxygen level and your frontal lobe's going down, you feel even worse. It increases that dopamine level. Yes, that as well. Yeah, um, actually, yeah, we, we talk about dopamine in, um, in control level three and what it does to your brain. Dopamine is something that you get in your brain. It's, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's it's this little thing in your brain that you get from playing these games when, uh, you know, when, that makes you feel good. And it happens when, you know, you defeat someone, you, you beat someone in the game. Or even with games such as Candy Crush, which is uh, so addictive for so many people, um, it tells you, you're awesome, you you leveled up, you're, you're the great, you did this, you did that. And whenever, so every time that little word pops up on your screen, you get some uh, some a hit of dopamine, a dopamine rush in your brain. Now, the problem is that when the game becomes harder and harder, and you find you win, you get a shot again, and eventually you get addicted to that good feeling of dopamine. But when you get an an overload of dopamine, the dopamine level goes down again. And you're like, oh, I want this again, I want this again, I want this again. And according to Dr. Greenfield, um that addiction that you have because of the dopamine um that you that can lead to behavior 
bigger problems it, 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 because because of this dopamine that's going to your brain it's just so crazy and and it's so scary that aggression is definitely connected to dopamine and I also looked into another study where different research explain like yeah definitely there are connections with school shootings and video games I mean they've got proof right there I and mean, I can look up the source for anyone and give them the study right here, a whole study uh, done by different researchers in a scientific magazine. It's right there in a scientific journal, and they got proof right there, school shootings and playing video games. Yeah, and there is also um, the levels change, too, according to what type of game is being played. Um, as far as if it's a violent game, it will stimulate a certain feeling compared to a game that the person would think is an innocent game like Mario. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I have a quote here. That's also from Dr. Greenfield from the, I think it's the, let's look up the website here, the American Academy of Neurology. Um, and he says something really interesting about violent games. He says, um, violent video games are of concern to many experts. In a study of 45 adolescents playing violent video games for only 30 minutes, immediately lowered activity in the prefrontal re regions of the brain. So that's the frontal lobe um, that we just talked about. To those who participated in a non-violent game. And Peaver's research showed that just 10 to 20 minutes of violent game increased activity in the brain regions associated with arousal, anxiety, and emotional reaction while somewhat simultaneously reducing activity in the frontal lobes associated with emotion regulation ex executive control, the dopamine release that comes from gaming is so powerful, say researchers, it can almost shut the prefrontal regions down. That's one reason why gamers like Rosner, <clears throat> that they were just talking about this gamer um, in a, another section of this article, can play for 18 hours straight, Kids plop themselves in front of a computer and they'll stay there for 8, 10, 25, or 36 hours has stuck to Greenfield. I mean, this is scary stuff. This is crazy. It's scary, too, because there have been, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners haven't heard this, but a lot of people, the gamers, have died because they are sitting there. There's that inactivity of their body. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 so unhealthy for our bodies to be sitting there hours and hours. And I've done this. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can attest to that. I've, I've spent yeah. probably like 14 hours at a time just sitting there yeah, playing yeah. Tomb Raider 2. So, yeah, <laughs> Final Fantasy <laughs> 7. <so> <laughs> I can't imagine that. I mean, I've seen my son do it, and it's like, you've got to get up. You've got to move. Yeah, I invested yeah. 110 hours on Final Fantasy 7 alone. <laughs> straight uh not straight but uh by the time i got done because it keeps track of how long you're playing at the end whenever i finally beat the game but I, that was the thing is i had to go through i had to get everything i had to do the ruby weapon emerald weapon had to get the knights of the round so yeah, yeah. wow um, I, I think you know with games it's for many people it's hard to understand like why would you play for a game for so long and I think there's multiple um, aspects that come into play. And, and first of all, if, of course, it's a dopamine. I mean, um, when you, you know, when you feel this, this pleasure coming into your body, into your brain, you feel good. You, of course you want more, you know, and, and then it's temporal. It's gone. You're like, oh, I need it even more because I just had it and it's gone. But I'm sure it's going to give me that again. You know, that's 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 how you're starting to reason. Um I think it's also for online games, it's the social aspect. Um, it's it's that wanting to have a relationship with someone, you know, a French in a friendship, wanting to have a friendship with someone. Um, I mean, when I played games, I was in school and did not and, and did not have a lot of friends. And I missed that. So I was trying to look for those things in video games where people don't know what you look like, don't know who you are. You can make up anything. You can tell them uh you're a girl and you're actually a guy or the other way around you can tell them you're 30 years of age and you're actually 12 you know you can tell them anything and make yourself look so good while maybe you think you're not in real life but there and and um it, it, it's also that um um that greatness you know you can be the hero well in real life you're just messing things up in in the game you can be this awesome guy that's just beating everybody you can be the best 
of the best. And and I think that's such a that's something in video games that draws people to it that they're trying to find satisfaction that they can't find in real life. Yeah. I would I would agree with you on that. Have you also noticed a correlation with uh, people that uh, are members of Netflix and Hulu and a lot of these other ones that get on there and they binge watch these TV shows and then after the like say if they get on there and they watch Stranger Things and they watch all eight episodes and then after they're done they're like oh there's nothing to watch. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of our experience. You know, <laughs> you finish this game, you're like, so what's next? What am I going to do now? <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I get disappointed if I've binged watched something. I feel empty when yeah. it's over. It's like, okay, what am I going to watch now? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I think with with um, games like The Sims um, that they did a pretty good job with getting people uh, make sure people stay hooked because uh, with The Sims is a, is a is a game that simulates life. So you can create your family. You can create can create people. And and give them jobs and feed them and whatnot, um, and have to live in a city with other Sims around them that they can interact with. The thing with the Sims is that it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. It just never stops. Um, I I love the housemate who um, um, studied graphic design, and she was talking about Pinterest. How with Pinterest, there's endless scrolling. There's no end to the page, so people keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling because. There's nobody to tell them to tell them stop. And I think that must be the same way with, with The Sims. There's no one to tell you stop. Must be the same with these online games. There's no end. You could just go on forever. And when nobody tells you to stop, you're not going to stop. Yeah, I remember long before The Sims even came out, there used to be a game on Activision made called Little Computer People. And that was the same thing. I had that on Commodore 64. And my goodness... The hours I spent there just staring at somebody in the house. It's like, go feed the dog. Go play the piano. Go do this. Yeah, well, we... think back of Pong. When that came out, people spent hours on that watching just a little blip on the screen going back and forth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it seems so so silly to, to like that stuff. And to me now, when I look at The Sims, I'm like, why did I play that? You know, feeding some electronic human a sandwich. <laughs> but, but you know, like, Satan has something for everybody. And um, I think with The Sims, what it does is, he, Satan knows women are uh, of the, uh, the more ca- more caring. They are the ones who have this, this um, kind of a, of course, men also have love, but have this lovable character that they want to take care of someone. And and Sims is for focusing um, on teenagers. So even when you're a teenager, though you're not ready to become a mom yet, you still feel like you want to take care of some something. And when you have your Sims, it's like your little creation. Like you made this; these are your babies, as it were. And and you want to take care of them. And you know, and women even. When, when girls become teenagers, they start having these feelings for boys and want to f- feel in love. So in The Sims, you can create uh, Sims and make them fall in love and make them have that happy marriage and a happy relationship and go on dates and everything. So you can experience that in the game if you were not have it in real life. Though, you know, of course, at the age of 12, you're a bit too young to be dating. But, you know, that's what I give you in the game. It's pretty frightening and... Um, yeah, I, I, I think The Sims was probably the game that I was most addicted to. I mean, I played all kinds of games. I played Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> uh, Grand Theft Auto, when I, I cannot even describe the vice in that game, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, vice, yeah. Vice City, uh, uh, oh. oh. <laughs> I, I, I got in one spot in that game, and I just stayed there for... I don't know, like probably at least eight or nine months. And I was just roaming around, just doing er- anything and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no law in that game. It's just limitless, which you can do. Well, I had access to the helicopter. So, of course, you know, I had to. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> yeah, an interesting thing about Grand Theft Auto that we discuss in um, Controller 3 is you know in, in controller we three we tried not to focus too much on oh the violence the violence the violence because that's not going to help anybody when you're totally into games you're not going to care about those things we tried to talk 
about the spiritual messages in there uh, and the Gnosticism again. Um, and in Grand Theft Auto, what's something that I thought was was pretty interesting is that um, this is in Grand Theft Auto Five. They have side miss- missions, so you have the main story, and you just play you know play one mission, and the story goes on. And you have side missions; you can just do it on the side. And then in side missions, you play with Michael, one of the three protagonists, Michael the Santa, and he gets in contact with a cult that's very similar to Scientology, but they have also have a god they pray to called Kiflam. So it's kind of like a mixture between Christianity and Scientology. So he he ends up uh, getting in contact with his cult. And he has to do all kinds of missions for them. Like he has to steal some cars here and has to do this and that and, and donate lots of money, just like in Scientology. And when you really look at this cult and what it's about, it's 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 pretty, pretty Gnostic. Um, for example, the leader of the religion uh, of this uh, religion called Epsilon uh, is Chris Fromage, and he, he denies that this religion is a cult, and he calls it a fellowship of like-minded adults who type money in exchange for salvation and merit badges. That's a direct quote from, from the Grand Theft Auto Wikia website. So here you got a guy who offers salvation, plus he has an enemy um, called he, an enemy called Darius Fontaine, and in Grand Theft Auto, I think it was San Andreas, during a live radio show that you can listen to in your car when you're driving around, he calls him the devil. Now, his first name, Chris, com- comes from Christopher, which comes from the Greek name Christophorus, and that means bearing Christ. Um, plus, in one Epsilon site mission, Chris's voice is heard from some speakers high. Well, we have a clip like that in you know, where it's pretty obvious that he's speaking as if he's speaking from the clouds, and he says... <laughs> something you know pretty pretty biblical um he says uh, let me look up the reference um he talks about not surviving the apocalypse or something like that but it's then he also wrote a book called we all came from the same tree i mean what tree do we all come from that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from the garden of eden so it's a clear reference to that tree um, and, and because of that tree, you know, because we ate, ate, ate from that tree and Adam ate from that tree, we became slaves to sin. So this is a, a Christ-like figure, uh, many similarities with Jesus Christ. He offers salvation, but instead of saying, oh, it's for free, you know, Christ dying for your sins, he says, no, 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 you got to pay for this thing. You got to make sure you steal some cars, make sure you donate a crazy amount of money and all those things. And when you come to the last side mission here, you have you have three options. You know, you can you can decide how the story goes. But one of the options is Chris from Marsh steals all of your money and he leaves Michael with just a rusty old tractor. That's not the kind of Christ that is portrayed in the Bible. That's not what Jesus is like. Um, and clearly when he makes a reference to the tree in the Garden of Eden, He's pretty much saying, oh, we come from the same tree where sin started. In other words, oh, yeah, I'm fine with sin. No worries. Um, And I think that's pretty gross misrepresentation of who Jesus Christ really is. And I don't think this is all coincidence. Um, uh, I mean, just like I said, if you just Google Gnosticism in movies, Google Gnosticism in games, many non-Christians are familiar with this stuff. And they look for Gnosticism and put it on websites everywhere for people to see like oh this is gnostic and this is gnostic so it's it's, it's, even non-christians are familiar with this are there any any games that people can play that you're aware of that don't use this replacement uh, theology yeah you know i'm sure there are like for example i used to play uh i used to own a nintendo wii and then i would play like tennis or something like there's nothing gnostic there's nothing spiritual after just playing tennis the reason why i decided not to play those games like no games at all is well first of all i know the 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 effects the, the, the games have on the brain and god says let us reason together he's saying stay focused um and jesus is also talking about you know watch and pray and and therefore i made a decision saying I, i'm not going to do this because I want to make sure that my brain is focused on the Lord so I can watch and pray and not be distracted. 
another reason why I tried to decide not to do it is because I really believe that um, Christ is coming soon. Um, I mean, when we look at Matthew 24, uh, it talks about all these natural disasters and everything. And of course, we always have wars. We always had natural disasters. But I mean, it's coming pretty intense right now. And I I really believe he's he's, he's coming soon. Not putting a date on there because, you know, the Bible says that um, um, that no one knows the hour thereof. But I believe that, you know, I don't know when, of course, I don't know when, but I believe that it, 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 it may be soon, maybe 100 years, maybe 20 years, I don't know, like, I have no clue. But with that, um, I really believe that um, right now is the time to to humble ourselves and to get on our knees and say, Lord, I need you and, and pray for the, you know, pray for the spirit, pray for the latter rain. And which is why I decided, you know, Lord, I, I really want to spend my time on you and every second that I have and and not be distracted because I believe that there's no middle ground and um in Christianity and I believe that if I cannot find a good reason why it's bringing me close to the Lord then I don't think there's any reason why I should be playing it um and then you know and and I believe that I could be so much more blessed if I would study the word and and spend time with God um, in my free time, and with that I could bless others. Because if I study the word, then I can share it. But if I don't study it, I have nothing to share. Amen. Oh, that is true. Amen. Preach it, Don. Preach it, Donny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should mention that little I we we we're the, we're the th- three of us right now, but we also speak in churches, so we're. Happy to go wherever the Lord wants us to go and share the gospel. It takes a person's mind off of our mission. Yeah, I I believe so. And, you know, like I used to play, um, before I became a Christian, I used to play in the Wii and I would play like tennis with my friends. Um, but there's other ways to be um be hanging out with our friends and and stuff you know like now now i'm living in tennessee in an awesome um environment and um now i'm really you know when i have some friends over and i i I love to just go out into the woods and go on a hike or something and we have the most amazing conversations about god that i would never have playing tennis on a wii you know what i mean (laughs) Yes, because all you're seeing is something that's man-made. When you're out, like you said, hiking, you are seeing the miracle of God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, w- I mean, I went hiking last Saturday with with my housemates, and we were just talking about God's awesome creation. Um, and yeah, it's just awesome. Yeah, I think it's uh, you know, like you said, that that Satan uses every tool that he can to distract and, you know, lie, kill, and steal and destroy. Yeah, I, yeah, I believe so. And I believe that, you know, the Bible says that Satan knows his time is short and he walketh around like a roaring lion, seeking we may devour. I know that Satan, like Satan is not um, um, resting. He's, he's continually there, continually looking at what can I do? Who can I tempt? Who can I deceive? Who can I make sure that, that, um, uh, is not going to make it on the other side. And, you know, think about it this way. If, what if we come to that last moment in life, last, when, when, when Jesus is coming and he says, you know what, you just needed those five more minutes with me that you just spent on your video game. And you, in those five minutes, you could have grown that you have, would have been ready but they were not. I mean, is that worth it? Whoa, no. So, and I know, like, I'm not some kind of a super saiyan. Like, I'm tempted nonstop. And I have my moments where I'm like, Lord, I don't know. Not really up for it right now. But I hear this quiet voice, the spirit speaking to me, saying, no, Nick, you know what's right. You know you need to do this. You know you need to grow. And you know that. You know that Satan is trying to take you away from this because he knows that you can become such a powerful tool in my hands, such a powerful soldier 
if you would study right now. And, and I, I, I know that, you know, I, I realize that. And yet, you know, um, I mean, I have also had those moments where I totally ignored the spirit. And, but then you drift away so far and you feel so down. But when I did, I mean, I had moments when I started the work three hours straight, three hours. And it took me three hours to just discover this one little thing. But that's the parable of the pearl in the, in the, in the field that Jesus is talking about. When we sell everything and we find this one pearl, man, that is worth so much. And that is eternal life. And not just living forever with video games, that's living forever with our creator and Jesus. And I, I believe that's worth it. And I believe that's worth giving up that one video game that's just going to distract us and just say, no, Lord, my time is yours and you are my priority. And man, if we do that, and if and if I would do it all the time, because I'm also struggling, really, I'm uh, there's temptations everywhere that I mean, I sometimes I think about this. I'm saying, Lord, what if all of us, all of your Christians, all of your children, including me, and, I, and I'm trying to do this more right now, but including me, every morning, pray and study just for one hour, every evening, set a time apart saying, Lord, at 8.30 in the evening, this is your time. I'm going to pray and study. How much would God's people change? And how soon would we experience that latter rain? Yes. I enjoy reading the Bible and not having a time limit because I always will go past if I say just an hour, it'll turn out to be two or three because, <laughs> yep. you know, I always say it's the greatest book, greatest yep. story ever written. And it's true. It's got everything in it. It is. Yeah. It has love. It has action. You just name it. And the Bible contains everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. And yeah, you know, I've experienced that when, I have experienced both sides. I've experienced hours and hours and hours playing video games. And, man, and then I've experienced um, three hours in a row just studying. Or even, I think, I think once I also prayed three hours in a row praying, intensely praying. And it was like, I felt like I was flying or something. I felt like I was in the air somewhere, not on planet Earth anymore, you know. <laughs> I just felt so good. And I was just shining and shining. And, you know, you ha when you have those moments when people in church come to you and they're like, oh, Nick, you're just shining today. But I don't want the just one day in a month or two months of people come up to me like that. I want that every day. And um, it was a few Saturdays ago that somebody invited me for lunch. And there was a missionary pilot there. He worked in Guyana. He, but he was American, but he worked in Guyana um, in South America. Uh, as a pilot helping out people reaching those in the jungles who need the word and need uh, physical healing and usually when you reach people um, and help them with their physical healing they open up to spiritual healing he was there uh in, in, at lunch here in tennessee and he should, he the only thing he did he sat down there to say when i looked at him and i thought there is something about you that i don't have he was looking so extremely peaceful and he was just shining and I thought I want what you have like I want to grow my relationship with the Lord that I can want that I can get what you have and I want to be that way too so when people look at me they'll be like I want what you have and they'll ask me and I can share it because I've studied the word if I don't study it I cannot share it the gift of the Holy Spirit yeah definitely that's that's what we need and I believe that's the foundation of everything is the spirit of spirit of spirit. If you don't have the spirit, there's no evangelism, there's no growing in the Lord, there's no overcoming. But man, when we pray for the spirit and when we pray for the latter rain, the Lord's gonna do something amazing. Yep, that was it's the gift. Beautiful. That was the gift that we got when he returned from the dead. He came back and he brought us peace and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the foundation for 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 everything. Um yeah, you know, and the theme for this documentary is um, control level three counterfeit controversy. Because when we look at the Bible, we know that um, from Revelation and, and from Ezekiel, um, that there was war in heaven. And that's when Satan was cast out to this earth. 
And he's continuing that war on this earth. There's a war between Christ and Satan, the, the, a controversy between both of them. And what we've seen in these video games, in Halo, in Grand Theft Auto, in, in, in Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, that there's like a counterfeit controversy going on, a counterfeit war in which you have counterfeit saviors, counterfeit heroes, um, um, counterfeit everything, and the Gnostic theme in there where, where the Bible is flipped upside down and you, by playing these games, are being distracted from the real, real war going on, the spiritual war, and therefore are not being prepared for the end of the war in which Jesus is going to win. Because in his games, it is Satan who's continually winning in all these Gnostic stories. But that's not what's really going to happen. And when we play these games, we're being distracted, being made ready. That's kind of the question that we're raising. Are games making you ready to side with Satan in the end and not with Jesus? Have you looked into uh, the D-Wave systems at all? Uh, do you follow Anthony Patch or any of them? Uh, no, I've never heard of them, actually. Oh, wow. I definitely need to send you some stuff to check out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, these, uh, the new computers that they got now, these quantum computers, they um, and this is the words coming out of the people who created them. This is the stuff coming out of their own mouths. They are saying that mm -hmm. when you are standing in front of one of these computers, that it pulses like it has a heartbeat. And that it's almost like standing at the altar of the gods. Uh, mm. They talk about these computers basically re reaching into other dimensions and pulling out information. I mean, it's it's pretty mind blowing. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Technology is going pretty crazy nowadays, and and you know, it's, I, I was watching a trailer from the new Nintendo. I forgot the name for it. Um, but there's a new Nintendo console coming out. And um, the crazy thing with this is that and it's already like that with the Nintendo, uh, uh, um, the under Nintendo console. I think it's a Wii, Nintendo U. I'm really not into video games anymore. So I'm trying to, <laughs> forgetting all this stuff because I'm not, you know, um, busy with it every single day. Um, yeah, I think if the, this one um, is is that you can just have your console on your TV and you just pick up a, a little screen that's 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 in a little docking station. Pick up the screen and continue playing your game wherever you go. So it's come becomes like a handheld console. I think that's pretty crazy. And it's it's obvious that Satan's like, you know, you like your game at home. Ugh, you feel so bad that you need to leave it behind. Here you go. Just take it with you. Everywhere you go, there's your game right there. <laughs> well, well, look at Pokemon Go. I mean, look at how people yeah. were just losing their mind. Do you see that one thing over there? Uh, I can't remember if it was China or Philippines. There was one place where the the whole city was just flooding all in one direction because they had dropped some Pokemon out there in the middle of nowhere, and everybody was losing their minds trying to get to it. They, yeah, they literally yeah. shut down the entire city. Yeah, it's been on the news in the Netherlands as well when I was still there that there's this <laughs> a, a nice nature reserve or something and all these people flooding to it. And, um, yeah. And, you know, there's there was something uh, interesting somebody shared with me at Staff Worship the other day. And she was reading a story of um, from a book called Spirits of the Rainforest. Um, and this was quite shocking. In this book, there's a missionary, and he shares like, oh, you know, um, he was in some jungle and working with with devil worshippers. There was one devil priest that had become converted, and he got a letter from uh, his church with some concerns about Pokemon, and they sent him a book with all the Pokemon in there, and they were like, yo, can you look into this? Because, you know... We're a bit worried. We don't know what to do. And he was like, oh, I don't have time for this, you know. And all of a sudden, he was talking to this former devil worshiper, um, and and he was not who was not converted. And he was saying, and uh, talking to him, his wife ran up the, upstairs and grabbed the book and and the letter. And I was like, hey, yeah, you should give it to him. He's like, oh, that's right, that's right. So, uh, Mister, whatever his name was, um, what do you think of this? Um, do you have any thoughts about this? And um, 
Let's see, because I have a quote right here on our website. We post a blog about this on our website. And, um, uh, oh, here it is. It's pretty crazy. It says, opening the book at random, showing me a picture, I asked, what do you think of this? And he looked at it and said, oh, I know this one. He suddenly had my attention. He went on, oh, this is a nasty little demon. It's always underfoot, bites, scratches, screeches, and whatnot. I looked at the page, and on the list of attributes, the book said, bites, scratches, screeches, claws. And I forgot what else, but it, but it was as if Bautista, that's the name of the high, the, that former uh, devil priest, was reading the page. And he does not speak or uh, read or speak one word of English. He made a believer out of me. I figured that the first one could have been just a lucky guess, so I flipped the page to another picture and asked him about that one. Again, he told me exactly what its attributes were. He did that over and over. There were some he did not recognize, and he said, There are so many demons, it is impossible for any one person to know them all. This was huge. I ran upstairs and got our youngest son, who did happen to like Pokemon car cartoons. His aunts sent him VH1, uh, VHS tapes of them. When he got downstairs, I had Bautista flip through the book again, explaining to my son what he knew about these ugly little pictures. While he made a believer out of Stephen, he went back upstairs and came back down with his prized tape, and while he watched, it just destroyed it. Bautista looked on with curiosity, not really understanding what Stephen had just done. I quickly brought him up to, to speed and thanked him for helping to open our eyes. But Bautista added, tell the people from your churches that if there are things that make them feel uncomfortable, it is probably not good. God's spirit will speak to them about what is right and wrong. Um, so that's from the book Spirit of the Rainforest by Mark Andrew Ritchie. That is scary. <laughs> Very scary. Yeah, I've got a uh, a, uh, a video that I'm going to send you to check out. That uh, there was sure. a, a gentleman that actually went to um, a Prophecy Club and actually did a mm -hmm. uh, he did a whole thing about Pokemon. And right. I mean, there is so much stuff that has to do with the occult, esoteric, and demonology yeah. that is totally. I mean, it's just, it is laced with it. And I mean, you wouldn't yeah. really know it. Like I said, unless you're into the occult and study the occult and the esoteric, you wouldn't even have a clue. Well, yeah, you wouldn't know it otherwise. But you know, it's it's scary because this is a kid's program and this is a kid's playing with these cards. And my brother had lots of cards. And I mean, I my parents, we, we I wasn't raised a Christian. My parents would... um. They would not allow me to watch Pokemon because I said, oh, you know, we don't want you to watch some, this aggressive show with animals killing each other. That's weird. So I would sneak out of bed at six in the morning to watch Pokemon. You know, I, I grew up with that stuff. I loved it. But yeah, this is it's, it's just really crazy. And um, just Sajan has something for every single generation. Yeah, it was uh, Dungeons and Dragons when I was growing up. That was the big thing is... You know, a lot of people weren't allowed to play it, let alone watch the cartoon on Saturday mornings when it came on. I, I had a, yeah. one friend who uh, was the the pastor's son, and his sister wanted to watch Smurfs, and they weren't even allowed to watch the Smurfs because they had magic in it and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's what one thing I learned about Satan is that he does things um, step by step. He won't just, you know, if you would go back to the eighteen hundreds. And throw an Xbox at them with Halo. I mean, people will think you're crazy and you're some kind of a witch or something. And I even heard of a story of um, an Amish kid who left the Amish community and went to his first to, to watch his first movie ever, which was an old western. And when we compare the old western to today's movies, all like, what? That's stupid. You know, that was just silly stuff. But it was his first movie and he the, as soon as he watched it and saw all this, all this violence he ran out of the cinema and threw up and then we think he's crazy we're, we're the crazy ones we're accepting everything yeah i just recently saw a video online of uh when the exorcist first came out and they were recording people's reactions as they come flying out of the theater and there was people fainting in the the movie theater and yeah, there, there was a lot of people, they just, they couldn't even finish the movie. They just had to get up and walk out because it was just so <laughs> horrific. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... I grew up in that time. I was very little, and but I can remember it. And that's a movie I have never, ever watched. I refuse to let it in my home. 
Yeah, it's a good decision to make. It's um, you know, like, like I said, it's 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 Satan has this going on, and slowly but surely he he pulls you in there. Um, I um, I mean, when you look at Nickelodeon, the shows I used to watch as a kid was you know like totally spies. It was a copy of um, uh, Charlie's Angels. That, that's what it really was. With violence in there, but pff, not as bad as a you know an adult movie with violence and everything. And he he has he starts with the little ones. I mean, when you watch TV programs for three years old, it obviously has magic in there and everything. And the Lord's like, "Hello, that's not something I'm improving." Um, but Satan is like, "Oh, I'm going to stick it in there." And it seems so innocent. Nobody nobody knows. If like, you don't notice those things, you don't see those things. Um, like it, it's it's just very subliminal, and then he started try, trying to grow and grow and grow this thing until we accept all kinds of crazy finds. And it's exactly the same with video games. It's it it might even start off with something that is not even wrong at all. That's just simple, uh, you know, snake playing snake on your old Nokia. That's that's what it might be. But then that's also what. Um, Two of these guys in our documentary that I shared a testimony. That's what I what they share. They like you know it started off with something as small as that. But what, one of these guys he said, I, I it started with snake and I was just intrigued by that. I I thought it was fascinating, and then you know you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and you end up playing games that you never thought you would play. You know. Yeah, that I, I totally got sucked into a lot of the uh, puzzle games like Tetris and. Devil Dice and um, Intelligent Cube and all that, and but then again, I, like I said, I've, I've I've played all the spectrums. That's the thing is, I don't play games near as much as I used to anymore. In fact, I can honestly say I really haven't even sat down and played you know a game, any game in particular, for more than like twenty, thirty minutes in a long time. Because yeah. I just I don't have the time to do it. I'm constantly researching, reading books, watching lectures, documentaries, and, I, and yeah. you know if I'm not doing that, then I'm reading my Bible. So uh, I, I I stay pretty well, uh, you know, busy. I, I just don't have yeah. time to do anything else anymore like I used to. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, that's and and well, I'm, I'm not saying that we should read the Bible nonstop. I mean, that would be pretty crazy. Um, but you know. To, to I always think about it this way, like, when I do this, we will glorify God? Because the Bible says, do everything to glorify his name. Will it help me to grow close to the Lord? And, uh, for example, I watch documentaries because the thing, the difference between entertainment-style programs and documentaries in the frontal lobe is that with entertainment, the, the scenes, the clips change so frequently that your brain can't handle it. It's a pressed frontal lobe, and your brain goes from this beta, a beta state into this alpha state. When you watch informative documentaries for nature programs or even C-SPAN, there's usually one camera angle, in, or there's, uh, you know, it takes such a long time for somebody to um, 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 explain something in the documentary that's very informative. It takes forever to explain something. A ch- camera doesn't change that frequently, that little shot. And um, that's the difference between the two. So I, I, I watch the documentary once in a while and I also think about, no, you know, can I learn this for your glory? And, and you know, I believe that um, we should gain more knowledge in order to reach people. If I would have no clue about what's going on in the world, no clue what's happening, no clue about this or that, then how can I talk to people about things? You know, most people won't accept just the Bible straight away. You just need to have a normal conversation with them. And if you share some things, you have no clue what they're talking about. It's not going to work. It's impossible to carry on a conversation now with people. If you don't keep up and you're not able to point out what isn't godly, the fulfillment of prophecy. We see that every day. And as you said, the, the devil is, he's speeding up because his time is so short. We have to know for sure what's going on. I don't watch much mainstream media because they have so many leading lies. Yeah. But I will watch enough to be able to compare it with the fringe yeah. where I found I get more truth. Yeah, yeah. 
No, you're absolutely right. You know, it's uh, it's just we have, just have to find a balance of things between between the spiritual things and between things that we might need to share the gospel. You know, but we have to know like uh, where the line is that we don't cross the line. And I think that's really um, that's so important. And I think with many, you know, like with with video games, it's like um, it, something might seem so innocent. We always got to go back to does it bring glory to my God? Does it lead me or somebody else heavenward, or might I be better off doing something else? And plus, you know, um, the more time you spend in in video games and stuff, or TV or whatever, the more you will appreciate those things, though they don't fulfill, and don't appreciate the word of God. And um, going back to those testimonies that we have in here, they also share that, you know, the more I spend time playing these games, the more the less I really felt like like studying the word and they had no interest in the word anymore. And it was hard for them to go back to that. Um, you just have to, I guess, force yourself to do it and say, no, Lord, I know this is what, is, what, is, what I'm supposed to do. Well, he tells us that we, he is our one and only God. We are not to have any other gods before us. Right. Exactly. And when we play the video games, when we watch movies, when we take anything that isn't of God and make it the center of our life. It turns right. that into an idol, and that's another replacement. That's very true. Um, and also, when when you look at um, the houses of people who used to worship false gods, and pagans, you know, in, in, in the old days, all their furniture was centered around their gods. And today, all our furniture is centered around the TV, is centered around the game console. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. And I believe that when we spend more time doing something else and put more of our devotion to it, you know, our affection, that becomes a false god to us. And then we have another god before our true god. Um, and when we would rather play that game, watch that movie, than being extremely joyful about studying the word, I mean, that is that is another God before the creator. Um, and it's a conscious decision to do that. Yeah, it is. And, you know, um, there's some interesting, a uh, very interesting, um, I should say, parable that I once heard listening to a sermon. It was from um, Natasha Neblet. And um, she, now she's married, but back then she was engaged. And she was talking about, you know, how you can grow in your relationship with God. And in the Bible, the um, uh, women are often compared to the church in, in prophecy. So when we look at, she, she looked at uh, her relationship with her husband and she said, you know, it's, it's, um, if, if if um, I never talk to my husband, how am I going to have a relationship with him? And she she gave an example of her husband was speaking some or preaching, or then her back then her fiance, he was she was he was speaking somewhere. She was doing exercise and she had a, a radio station on or TV or whatever for iPhone or the live stream something like that. And um, as soon as he came on, you know, she she ran towards the iPhone. and was like, you know, like, oh, that, that, that there he is. And then she went back to her exercise. And like, oh, I, I shouldn't do that. Just come on, talk to act normal, calm down. But she said, what is it like with God? When we hear God speak, when we hear His voice, are we like, oh, Lord, Lord, I'm I'm here, I'm listening, I'm listening. Um, when we have the Bible. Are like, oh, yes, 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 I can read the Bible. Yeah, I'm so excited. Or is it like, oh, dusty old book, video games, ooh, you know? So so that's a great comparison that she made, and it really touched me. I was like, this is so true. How often do I react like that? Oh, yes, I can study the Lord's Word. I had those moments, praise the Lord. But too often, we're like, okay, I'll do this, because then that makes me a good Christian. I'll do this. But no, the Lord's like, hello, I gave my son to die for you. And I once read an article um, in which a doctor explained what it actually did to Jesus' body. And um, often we think that Jesus got whipped 
but it wasn't whipping. When you when you look in the Bible, it's a scourging, and it's a scourging that had these pieces of bone in there. They were like hooks that would stick into your flesh and rip your flesh off. And this doctor explained Jesus whole skin and and even the some of the flesh under skin was ripped off his back. And then he was all bloody, and they put they put this robe on. Then they because they 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 um, held him as the king of the Jews. The Romans did put this robe on, and they took off the robe with all this blood on there. This robe sticks to your body when you have this blood on there. I mean that is insanely painful. And then they also, he also explained that when he was hanging on the cross, that he was probably his, bone, it, it, the, his bones were out of joint. I think it's Psalm 22 or 23 that explains that, that his Jesus' bone, bones were out of joint. Um, it is extremely painful. And when he did all that for us, and then we just turn our back on him like, no, not today. Or or read the Bible like, okay, fine. You know, I, I really for all of us, including me, our attitude should change towards the word. That like, Jesus is like, I gave you this. So it will give you life. I gave you this. This is bread of life. If you would have, uh, we're starving physically, and somebody give you bread, man, you would devour that thing. But then here we are, starving spiritually. We know we are starving. And yet, we don't take it. We just let ourselves die. And then in the end, Jesus comes and he says, I am so sorry. I cannot allow you to go into my kingdom because you have not decided to step away from your sins. And I can't allow sin in heaven. And he has to tell us, I don't know you. Mm. Yep. That's so well said. Those are the words we do not want to hear. No. Yeah. It's true. Like, it's those words that, you know, uh, often it hurts. It's annoying, you know. And I also have sermons on this term like, oh boy, they hit the hit the nail right on its head in my life. Um but you know, God is his his book, the Bible, is full of that. And he's just whenever whenever he allowed the Israelites to be um sent into captivity, he didn't do it because he was some of the annoying God or mean God. He did because he loved them, because he said, Israel, you need to see and open your eyes that you're being going astray from me, that you're running away from what is true and righteous and what is love. And and he was saying, you know, you can all all these sacrifices, that's that's good because well, he 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 made that created a system in the in the old testament, the tabernacle. But what I really want is a contrite spirit, a contrite heart. I I just want your affection and your love and a character that reflects my character. Um, so he can prepare us for heaven because we're not going to enter heaven with all this junk in our hearts and our lives. He wants to cleanse us right now. He wants to purify us. He is the ultimate father. And as the ultimate father, he has to correct his children. Right. And that is where all that comes in. Because without that correction, we may fall to Satan. And he knows that we don't want to do that. So he corrects us. Yeah. Well, that Very plus, true, he's, he's got, that's the thing is that most of us are just so prideful, period. And that's the thing is, I know me personally, I had to be, I had to have my pride broken down numerous times. I had to be humbled. And I had to come before him humbly with my le- my tail between my legs because that was the thing is I I kept trying to do it my way. It's my way. I'm doing it my way. And eventually I got to the point where I said, okay, I've tried this repeatedly my entire life doing it my way. I'm going to do it your way. You tell me what you want me to do. You put me where you want me to go. And I'm going to do it how you want me to do it. Yeah. There There's a hymn that, that I just love that hymn. It says... Um, have thine own way, Lord. And um, I actually heard the story of how it was written. I, it, I think it was um, a group of people praying together and all these people asking, um, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And it was one lady that said, Lord, have thine own way. And I was like, wow, that's 
that is powerful, you know, to say something like that. That is true surrender. And John 3.30 says, he must increase, but I must decrease. And I just love that verse because, you know, it's, I believe that the greatest battle that we are fighting is not against the, uh, uh, against the devil himself directly, but it's against self. And we have to die to self die to our will and our desires and say, oh, I'm not going to do this. Or it's like, you know, that's not right for you. That's when uh, we become truly changed. And lately I have been praying this every morning. I wake up and say, Lord, help me, Lord, to die to self. And, and of course you fall, but I believe that, that there's power in prayer. And I believe that if I pray and pray and beg and plead with the Lord to help me to die to self for his will to be done and his name to be glorified, then he can do this not because I'm some kind of a holy being, but because he is able to do anything and take some, you know, ashes and bring it to life again. And I believe that as sinners and as a sinner myself, I am just a heap of ashes but as he's the creator he can give me life again and use me for his glory amen amen you just have so much insight that you're sharing and i I am praying that the people that are listening to this our audience is hearing the word of god coming through you yeah yeah that's you know and like, like i said it's it's. I don't want to be um, here to represent myself. I want to be here to represent God and for his name to be glorified. And I have such a passion for this message because it's it's everywhere. You know, like everybody has a TV. Everybody has a, 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 some kind of a game console. And especially with Nintendo Wii, it opened the doors for many families to accept gaming who are not into gaming at all. And I mean, it's just all out there. And I know that there's many people that are like, you're just crazy. Why are you doing this? You know, like, this is just nuts. Just leave me alone. And, well, I shared a message. And I know everybody has to make their own decisions. Um, and I truly accept that. But I'm so passionate about this because uh, it, it, it's it's just using up so much of our time that we can be devoted to the Lord in such an amazing way. And... Um, I mean, can't imagine not playing a game, but just going out, sharing the gospel and seeing people's lives changed and knocking on doors and saying, hey, man, did you hear about Jesus? Put it, you know, having a flyer and and giving it to someone on the street. Hey, have you heard about Jesus? And I heard a story of um, there's these tracks called Glow, giving light. uh, um, I forgot what the acronym meant, but it's called Glow. Uh, um, and um, I heard a story of someone had this, this little glow tract and I think it was about does God care that I'm hurting something like that and she was on the bus next, sitting next to a man and she had to get off the bus soon and the Lord was like come on you gotta give it to this man and she was like well, Lord this, this is so uncomfortable and, she, and the Lord's like no she gave it to him and he looked at it and he said you know what this morning I want you to commit suicide but I prayed, Lord, if you want me to live, if you're there, show me. And this is what saved his life. And what if we were that person that God is sending, but we ignore this, 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 the voice of the spirit and we say, nope, I'm sorry, God, I would rather play a video game. And that person dies. But he had a chance to come to the Lord and be, and be with Jesus forever. You know, that's like, I, I, I cannot cannot allow that to happen in my life i cannot do that i have to spend my time on the lord and be fully committed and devoted to him did, did you ever see the video of uh pen gillette uh the magician that uh he's a well-known atheist and mm. there, there was a guy that went to one of his shows and he actually gave him a new testament bible mm. and, and he actually got online and did a video and he said how much would you have to hate somebody to know that this would set them free and save them eternally and not share it? Right. He said, how much, how much would you have to hate somebody? Right. Yeah. It's Uh, very true. And I mean, it literally moved me to tears when I saw him (laughs) sitting there saying that I was just like, wow. Mm. 
And that's the thing is, you know, you got Christians nowadays, they want to divide and fight over everything. It's like, you know, pre-trib, post-trib, pre-wrath, you know, uh, Torah, non-Torah. It's like, really? It's like, the, this yeah. is the stuff that, you know, it's like the, we're doing the enemy's work for him. You know, sitting here fighting and arguing over just nonsense. It's like, you know, it's like as long as we can agree that Jesus is Lord and that he came and died for our sins, that's all we need to really come together on. It's like everything else, y'all can discuss this, y'all can look into it, but, you know, there's no need to fight over it. Yeah, I I agree. We shouldn't be fighting over those things. And, um, uh, we, you know, like there's war in heaven and then we're creating war in a church, like you're saying. And that's, that's not right. So... Yeah, we should definitely keep Jesus as our focus and um, make it, you know, make it the the rule of life to be spreading the gospel wherever we go. And some of these things are just so simple. Like I was talking about these glow tracks, so simple. I have them in my bag. I could just go to the grocery store and my mom, she's pretty crazy with this stuff. She goes to the grocery store, to the butcher, and she just puts them between the packages of meat and everything, you know. <laughs> but, you know, if you find that, Man, it can, it, it, it's so easy to do evangelism nowadays. Like, you don't need to be a preacher to share the gospel. And you can be just the first seed that's being planted in someone's heart, or you can lead them to the harvest, really. Yeah, I love I love it nowadays when people, they want to bring up the flood. They're like, well, if you worship God, you know, it's like he's homicidal. He flooded the earth and killed everybody. It's like, do you know the true story behind that? Why he flooded the earth? It's like, he didn't do it out of uh, hatred or anything like that. He did it to save us. Because if you go yeah. into Genesis 6 and start looking at what all was going on and read the book of Enoch and all that, it's like he had no choice. It was That was the only way he could save humanity was to destroy everything on the earth. Yeah, yeah. You you actually talk a little bit about the flood in control as well because the flood is something that you can find in Halo, um, and you know I believe the only reason why God created the flood is because if 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 there would not have been a flood, then what would have happened to Noah and his family? I mean, <laughs> people don't like the preacher, right? And he was preaching like, "Hey, get in the ark, get in the ark, get in the ark." You know, the the flood is coming. They might have just killed him eventually, or just died of age. But I think I'm, I think it'd be pretty um, reasonable to say that they would probably have just have killed him. Well, what would have happened to Jesus? Jesus could never have come if if Noah had been killed, or if Noah just died out of old age. Jesus could never have come. There will be no salvation for human for 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 sinners. There'll be no, there'll be nothing. And I believe that this is. This is why God did it. He did it out of mercy. And uh, I think it's that Isaiah where, God, where it says that when God finally destroys this, the, the sin in this world, everybody who's not accepted him, it says that he, he is a strange deed for him because God loves the sinner. He will always love them. He will always mourn over them. But he says enough is enough. We have to get, uh, there has to be an end to this. There has to be an end. Like he cannot go on forever. And he has been merciful for us for thousands of years. And he's still merciful for us today. And he's saying, come now before it's too late. For the people that are, are trapped in this cycle, and we want to get them back to God, but how should we handle that? I mean, as far as the parents, if they're you know addicted or they have children are, or they're just anyone, what can they do to help their family? And what can we do if we see it in someone else? I mean, I, the tracks, everything, I agree 100%. But how do we get that initial step of you're right. addicted, you need help? Right. Um, well, first of all, I would really like to encourage people by Controller 3 not because I want to make money or anything. Our money that we use goes to making new documentaries. But because I, we made these documentaries, make these, because we want to share uh, how you can overcome. In this documentary, we, like I said, we have testimonies from two guys who have been addicted, and they share how they overcame. And one of the things that they share is um, get a uh, another buddy, maybe even someone else who's playing computer games, and talk to him and say, hey, man, 
do you want to overcome this? Let's do this together. You know, when you're together, you're so much stronger. Ask people to pray for you and, and make sure you just pick up the Bible again. When you put one foot in the right direction, the Lord's direction, the Lord's going to answer your prayer and he's going to help you. Um, something else that we always encourage people to do is don't just take the TV or the video game, or whatever, away and do nothing don't, and not replace it with something else. Make sure to replace that thing. So we, a few months ago, even a few years ago, we had a blog on our website which talked about you know things you could do without the TV. I mean, you can go camping with your family. Um, I always saw uh, watching TV as oh this is a family activity but you're not even talking to each other you're just staring at a a big screen that's really what you're doing go camping that's where you the way you spend time with your family spend time with god you know in his nature and his creation maybe replace it with doing some sport activities like go mountain biking which is also pretty cool because that's also nature go hiking go swimming you know, always try to replace it with something just try to find a new hobby that you know that's going to bring glory to god i mean i love mountain biking and hiking and i know that when i do that man I, I'm, I'm in god's nature keeping my healthy body so i can stay more focused on the lord that's really important that you replace it with something and not just take something away good advice yeah, and another thing is you got a lot of people out there, they always want to say, well, you know, don't judge me, don't do this. And it's like, well, if you look at Second Timothy 4.2, I mean, it clearly says there we are to preach the word and be prepared in season and out of season that we're to correct and rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like um, one thing I want to make clear is that we're not trying to judge people because – we are just as sinful. We are also sinners. We still struggle with things and everything. And we're not trying to point at people like, oh, you're the sinner and, and you'd better change or uh, it's, this and this is going to happen. Like we don't, but we want to share this because we know what it's like. And, but we also know what it's like on the other side, on the good side. And we want to share this because out of love for souls because Jesus loves souls so much. He's longing to save them. He's like, come on, you can do this. You know, like just one more step, just two more steps. And you're, you're there. You're almost there. Come on. I'm coming soon. Get ready. And, um, and, and he's just saying, you know, get ready. And, and I want to cleanse you from this stuff. He just wanted to help them. And I believe that he wants to send his children who've experienced those things to help other people to get out of it. It's one of my sayings is I may not be able to judge, but I am allowed to inspect the fruit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's very true. Yeah. It's just, um, just trying to help another brother or sister in the Lord. And even though of course those people are not with the Lord, not to judge, but to love as Jesus loved. Yes, just correct them righteously. And that's the thing is, you know, Jesus, he corrected the apostles and everybody. I mean, he he wasn't afraid to correct anybody, and but he always did it righteously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he always did it with love. He didn't just go to people and like, um, you know, you're going to burn in hell if you don't repent right now. He's like, no, you know, encouraging them. And, um, that's what we are trying to do and not be um, some kind of a cruel person pointing fingers at people because um, Jesus said, you know, trying to take the speck out of one person's eye, you got to be with your own eye. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because we all, you know, as the Bible says, we all fall short. Yeah. Of the glory of God. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And the interesting thing is if you look at, um, um, when Moses was asking God, Lord, show me your glory. The Lord actually showed him his character. He's like, okay, I'll show myself to you. And he had all these different characteristics, like uh, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. I, I think that's it. That's Exodus 34, verses five and six, if I'm, if I'm correct. Um, so, what we can learn from that is, hey, Moses says, show me your glory. And God said, okay, I'll show you my character. So his glory is his character. And we've come, uh, come 
come short of the glory of God. We come short of his character of reflecting who he is. Amen. Chad, did you have any other questions? Oh, I'm, or uh, comments? Uh, yeah, I mean, this this is just amazing. This is one, probably one of my favorites so far. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. Is there anything that you wanted to share that you haven't been able to, Dominique? Um, I think it might be interesting for the listeners to share one more theme, the Gnostic theme that we find in um, in these video games. Um, I'm just thinking, looking through the script right now and thinking about which one might be pretty interesting to share. Uh, let's do Call of Duty. I know I... I, I think that today or tomorrow or they were going to release a new Call of Duty game, so it might be pretty uh, interesting to do. <clears throat> so I played Call of Duty 1 and 2, and I think I was almost going to play the next one, and then you know I came to the Lord and became less interested in video games and stuff. Um, we looked at Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which is a, a pretty recent game, and um, in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, it's extremely complicated storyline. I mean, it's like very layers by layers by layers that dig through, and it's very hard to understand. It's like one big puzzle. But the basic theme of Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is that there is this this technology uh, that's just skyrocketing. There's this uh, a new system that they use called the DNI, which sounds like DNA. And it's, with this DNI... Um, uh, they're, that's installed in their brain. They're extremely uh, um, um, smart, and they they can do a lot of crazy things, like talk to someone in your in the other person's mind and everything like that. Problem with the DNI system is Corvus, which is a bug in the system, and this Corvus uh, uh, can control the minds in which DNI is installed. And I think it's interesting that the game designers picked the name Corvus because a Corvus is a bird species that's similar to the raven. And um, the raven is a bird uh, often used in movies to represent death. So who is the cause of our death? It is Satan. Um, and then you look at Genesis, the verse goes, after tempting Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, death came. So when you when you... Uh, look at Corvus, he takes control of all these people. Now, in the last part of the game, you have to fight Corvus in a frozen forest, and Corvus is, is, is this black, demonic creature, you know, what exactly what people think demons look like. Now, Corvus is a being that possesses people, basically, he possesses people, people in their minds he takes control of them fully and and leads these people to control to kill uh other people in their own army and everything and when he possesses them they start talking strange things they start talking about a frozen forest they're like oh yeah corvus is going to send me to the frozen forest and that's a good place and a frozen forest that he's talking about what these people are talking about is a place where they live on forever and ever and ever and ever so here is this demonic being that takes control of people, that possesses people, that says, oh, guess what? I'm going to give you everlasting life. And, but that's exactly what Jesus does. Jesus is like, I'm going to give you everlasting life. And then in this game, again, there's Gnosis that put things upside down, put things down in its head and say, no, 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 no. You know, it's actually this demonic creature that's going to give everlasting life. But in the game, it's, it's portrayed as a very evil place. You don't want to end up there. And and that's in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Um, I think the most Gnostic game that we looked at is probably Halo. That was <laughs> pretty insane. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we, dis- we discussed Assassin's Creed, how there's so much uh, Freemason symbolism and there's so much Gnosticism. I mean, it took me, I think, a week to figure out Assassin's Creed and its storyline. I'm sure I haven't even discovered everything I could discover. Do you think that the virtual reality goggles that they're coming out with, with the games, that it's going to make the addiction worse? Yeah, I think so. You know, like I just talked about the new uh, uh, console of the Wii that they have and how you can make this into changes into a uh, portable console. And with virtual reality, with those glasses, I mean, 
I think you can do great things with virtual reality and with those glasses. I mean, you can teach doctors how to do how to do operations, and games are used for a lot of good things too. You know, like you can educate people as long as it's not affecting the brain, and as long as there's no weird story in there, I think that you can use it for good things. Um, I don't think it's a good thing to use for pleasure because then there's a distraction problem but if you want to educate people with it uh i mean my 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 colleague scotty meyer uh from little life studios he has his he's homeschooling his daughter and she uses a computer to go through a, a, an interactive game to to learn you know uh just the english language to learn words and then punctuation and everything there's nothing wrong with that you know that's just to teach teach these kids to to be good citizens later and actually understand the english language but it's when you use virtual reality and all those games for pleasure you're you're to- being totally submerged into that thing it's holy um actually a, bo- a good book to read about video games would probably be I think it's called Game Addicts. Let me look at my notes here. Uh, Game Addicts by News Clark and P. Javon Scott. Um, and they also talk about this submersion that gamers themselves say, oh, I was totally submerged. And, you know, in this book, they explain it's nothing else than the frontal lobe going down and the L state coming into play and everything. And, yeah, that's the thing with virtual reality, too. It's you're totally submerged it's just everywhere it's not just in your living room with someone who can distract you it's all around you it's like you're in the world itself i think one of the strangest things that i'd heard at the time when it was released that doctors they did a study and that doctors who played video games had better surgical skills yeah 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 you know, like I said, there's many there's many research has been done that shows that um, um, games are can be used for good things, but my point is that um, if if something is distracting us from the Lord, like why would we do it? I I have nothing against doctors playing games, you know, that will uh, teach them how to do better surgery, but when we play a game and there's some good effects. But there's also some bad effects. Like, you know, why would we do that? It's the same mm-hmm. as as let's say, let's let's talk about um, just drinking a beer. When you drink a beer, it's proven by science. And when you drink drink that, your frontal lobe is being suppressed and it goes down in everything alpha state. Or when you drink wine, for example, wine's same same stuff. Wine has some good things in there. But, you know, it also has some pretty bad negative aspects that really distract you from the Lord and really puts you into this alpha state. And, you know, it's the same with video games. Video games might have some good aspects. And I know that's research and science that tells that there is. But when there's when when you play this game, but then you're distracted from the Lord, when you play this game, you don't feel like studying your Bible and you don't feel like doing this. And I've had that too, you know, like I, I don't feel like just socializing my family. I don't feel like doing those things. Then I don't think it's worth it, really. Yeah, I just didn't understand at all how they came up with that correlation or how they could possibly do that study. I have read studies in which I talk about uh, first-person shooter games and I'm like, oh, you know, they became more uh, focused because of that. You know, they were they were quicker to respond to things. Their 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 reaction was better. But I'm like, sure. But when you look at all the other studies about violence and what it does to your brain and what it does to your relationship with God, I don't think that's worth it. I can just get that from some something else. You know. I agree, totally. Danique, would you like to tell everyone again? about your new documentary coming out and the date and where people can watch it at. Sure. So the date, the release date is November 7th, which is uh, a week from, uh, a little more than a week from today uh, when we're having this conversation. So from November 7th, they're going to release it. It's going to be on DVD for 20 bucks. It's um, about a little bit more than an hour and a half. And you can get it on our website, littlelightstudios.tv. And um, you can also get it on demand on Vimeo. If you go to Vimeo, 
to our uh, Vimeo page, you can get it there. It's a little bit cheaper. I mean, there's no disc or anything. Um, we have video on demand, mainly because, you know, when people live in other countries, it's a, it's a lot cheaper for them not having the shipping costs. Um, so you can get it there November 7th, starting from Monday. I think that's the 1st. No, that's the 31st of October. We have a uh, free giveaway on our Facebook uh, page. Every single day, Monday through Friday, we'll give away a free video-on-demand Vimeo version of controller. Uh, they can only start watching this, of course, when it's actually released. Um, but yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. We're super excited to release this, and you know, we really we don't want to judge people. Like I said, we don't want to just bash their video games. But what we really want to do is just say, hey. There is a better way. There is a better way. Like, I have experienced that. I've been there. We've got guys in his documentary talking about this, how they've been there, if they've experienced this. And, I, and, you know, when you watch these guys talking, they are shining. They're just shining for Jesus because now they've got Jesus in their lives. I mean, their lives are so much better. My life is so much better. None that I said I've given this up. And, I mean, I just got time left. I can work for the Lord. I can share the gospel. I can go for a hike in the woods and just talk to my father. There's nothing in my mind that's distracting me that's saying, oh, you do this, you do that. And like I said, the, the question that we're raising in this documentary is, are video games um, leading you to side with the devil in the last days? Is this what's going on with your brain, with all this violence you know, all these messages going into your brain when you are in such a hypnotic state, um, in this highly suggestible state. What's happening to our characters playing these games? That is that preparing us for Jesus? And 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 the second coming is that we're all looking for. That's what our faith is all about. Or or is this preparing us to start with the devil and we don't even know it? Yeah, we are told to look up. Our redemption draws nigh. If we're looking somewhere else or focused somewhere else, we're going to miss it. Yeah, it's going to come as a surprise. Like, really? Lord, you're here already? I'm not even ready. <laughs> yes. Can you tell people how they can get a hold of you? And also, do you take donations to help out with your film projects? How can people donate? Yeah, so you can. they can go to our website, littlelightstudios.tv. Uh, we have a button there for donations, and they can help us out there. Like every donation is very much appreciated. We also have a series on YouTube called LED, Light Exposing Darkness. And if they uh, donate 25 bucks a month or more, um, they get all the LEDs, the free video series that we do about movies and TV. They get all those on DVD sent to their uh, home address. So we'll get those for free to them. They can do it on our website. Um, they can also book a sermon or seminar on our website, littlelightstudios.tv. We got Facebook and Twitter, YouTube. Um, YouTube has all the free stuff. Vimeo is for uh, getting video on demand. And uh, they can call us, or um, our phone number is also on our website, or just send us an email, info at littlelightstudios.tv, or contact us on Facebook, uh, send us a message, and we'll get back to them there. Wonderful. Everyone check out their site. They have so much. It's been a pleasure having you on with us tonight. Yes. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be here, and it's a privilege and a blessing. Thank you, and you're welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to say, Chad? Oh, I'm just uh, very humbly uh, excited that uh came on and uh, definitely everybody check out little light studios uh, make sure that you check out the uh, new documentary the controller level three uh, one and two i, I believe that y'all offer that one as a set uh, that they can get that's that right. for about twenty dollars yeah. that's how i got it and i definitely definitely i am letting everybody know you need to get replacement gods that is a very very well done yeah yeah replacement gods is the one that's been sold uh, most so far so yeah that's uh, I mean when I first watched Replacement Gods before joining Little Light I was blown away so I advise anywhere to get that one yes <laughs> well I'm going to go ahead and say tonight's closing prayer is yep. everyone ready yes, yes.
Dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us all together and letting us hear your word through Danique, her, what she does to share your word. It's a wonderful ministry, Father. Please bless it and let everyone that's out there take a look at it, listen. And if they're addicted to the video games or TV or anything like that, Please, Father, let them turn their eyes from that and have them look up to you. Let them hear your voice calling. Please put a hedge of protection around all of our listeners and around Anique and Chad and myself. Please bless everyone. And just stay close with us, Father. Keep us to where we have that relationship with you, that everyone has that desire to walk with you in the way that you want us to. And do everything for your glory, Father. I pray this in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you again, Danique and Chad. And that's going to do it for tonight, folks. We thank you for tuning in. And we pray that you all have a blessed week. Good night, everyone. Good night.